nearly won the Democrat primary. <laughs> right. This is not in, the, in isolation. Well, the Republican convention is just a couple of days away, but there is still a last-ditch effort to try and deny Donald Trump his party's presidential nomination chairs. Yes, but if they couldn't stop Trump winning the majority of delegates fair and square, is there any mechanism or justification for blocking Trump at all? Well, Jack Berkman is trying to do exactly that, right down to the wire. He's a top Republican fundraiser, lobbyist and conservative talk show host. Everyone's got a talk show, it seems. <laughs> He's a former Jeb Bush supporter, still hopeful of making somebody else the nominee next week. Jack Berkman is in Washington, D.C. Welcome to Planet America. It's a great pleasure. Good morning. So we're getting pretty late in the game with Cleveland just days away now. Do you really think there is any way to stop Donald Trump being the nominee of your party? We hope so. We think so. I can't stand Donald Trump. I actually can't stand him more and more every day. If he is the nominee, I'm committed to support him. I'll support the nominee of our party. Anything would be better than uh, Her Majesty HRC. But I think we can stop him. We raised a lot of money. We're raising more money. You will see a bombardment of media in the Cleveland media market next week. We have a lot of resources to buy a lot of media. We've talked to just about every single leader delegate, and by Sunday, we probably will have talked to a majority of all delegates. And I think, there's, I think a surprise is waiting for Mr. Trump on the first ballot next week. Uh, of course, if, you, if you're going to stop Donald Trump, uh, you need a candidate to step up to do it. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Ted Cruz? Is it going to be John Kasich? Is it going to be somebody we haven't even thought of? Uh, I, it won't be Ted Cruz and it won't be John Kasich. I don't think either one of them will get involved in this and I don't think it'll be Scott Walker either. Those are the three names that are being bandied about. I suspect you may see the emergence of a popular dark horse. Like who? We shall see. <laughs> I have, I have no comment on that, except to say you may see a popular dark horse. J Jack, leaving aside the practicalities of how to actually do it, let's say you do achieve this dark horse taking over and uh, Donald Trump is kicked to the curb. What happens to all of Donald Trump's supporters? Doesn't this mean open civil war in the Republican Party? If you want me to look ahead two or three years, I don't think the GOP survives. I think you're going to enter a period uh, almost like the 1850s in U.S. politics where the GOP bust up. There are too many problems. You can't hold it together. There's a, there's a sense among the masses in the GOP that Washington elites no longer represent them. Uh, that kind of thing can't last forever. I would predict the GOP bust into two or three pieces. Once that happens, the Democrats will bust into two or three pieces. You know, you might have the center in both uh, uh, parties get together. You may even see for a while strange alliances in the U.S., almost like East Europe, where far left and far right get together. I predict you're heading for a transformational period in American politics. One thing to keep your eye on is you have reached a point for the first time in American history where far left and far right have more in common than they have different and apart. Why is the Republican Party shooting itself in the foot rather than getting behind this guy? Well, it's difficult. You look at those polls. He's behind. That's true. He's within striking distance. It's within the margin of error. The problem is he's down in all of those states. Like if you look at Ohio and Florida, a lot of those scenarios are based on a Republican, him, uh, winning Ohio and Florida, and, and then moving on, maybe adding Pennsylvania, or adding Virginia. The problem is he's down by something in all of those states, in North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Virginia and Ohio. Uh, in all of the swing states, he's even down in Nevada, which he really shouldn't be because he's had a presence there for decades, but he's trailing in Nevada. Uh, it's just that he's trailing in Michigan. So uh, even in states where you would expect him to do well, I don't think he's doing so well. Jack, I suppose if we assume for the purpose of argument that Hillary is definitely going to win and Trump wouldn't win anyway, isn't the, the bigger concern what happens to the House? If you have a situation like it is right now, Trump may lose the presidency, but it's give or take whether the Democrats take the Senate and they definitely won't take the House. But if the Republican Party just becomes a shooting gallery, then maybe they take the House and then the Democrats can do whatever they like for two years. Well, the problem is we think Donald Trump is the guy who might take the Senate down. I don't think the House is in play. The Senate's surely in play. The problem with Trump at the t top of the ticket is I have a concern that he may cost us the Senate. 
And I think if you talk to Republican Senate candidates all over the country in places like Pennsylvania and Michigan and, uh, oh, you name it, in Florida, I mean, even Marco Rubio, he'll be running away from Trump. Everybody will be running away from Trump. Everybody with a brain will be running away from Trump. Nevada. So uh, I think he's the guy who may cost us the Senate. So, so, Jack, can you can you talk me through your, uh, I, I guess, uh, fluctuating uh, affection for, for Donald Trump? Last year, you're, you're quoted widely as describing him as a liar. Earlier this year, though, you were saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise $200 million to get this guy elected. Now you're raising hundreds of thousands, if not millions, to stop him at the 11th hour. I mean, you know... Millions. Well, millions. So, well so, it's been in a... It's been, a, uh, it's been an emotional and an intellectual odyssey, let us say. I mean, I opposed Trump in the primaries. When he became the presumptive nominee, I said, I was kind of like Paul Ryan. I said, in fact, I talked to Ryan about this. We both had the same view. Uh, we said, well, he's our nominee. Let's support him. We'll go along with him. We have to be good Republicans. I went to see Trump in Trump Tower in May, first part of May. And uh, Trump, I really, what I found was that the man behind the camera was the same man as in front of the camera. I'd never met Trump before. I came away from that feeling that the guy was nuts. Uh, we then tried to do a fundraiser for him. I got threatening letters from his uh, uh, lawyer. Our publicist may have shared them with your team. You can have them if you want. And uh, we realized he was some kind of a control freak. And I said, you know what? I'm done with this. You guys win. I'm not going to get into a lawsuit with Donald Trump. We're moving on. You win. And I, uh, I then started raising money for the other side. And, and yet, and I yet, think it's as simple as that. Although it's still a little complicated because you're still saying that if the, 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 this last ditch attempt to stop Donald Trump next week doesn't pan out, you're going to support him because he will be the nominee. Well, I'm a Republican, and, and as, as much as I don't like Donald Trump, he's a far better alternative than Hillary Rudd and Clinton, whom we believe belongs in prison. So, yes, we would back him over Hillary Clinton. Jack Berkman, great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. We'll uh, look forward Thank to the events guys. out of Pleasure. Cleveland. Thank you.